Hello everybody, this is uh, Josh for Bill's History and War Game World. We have a special treat for you today with Bill in front of the camera instead of behind it. And so Bill, take it away. Alright, well hey Josh, and we have Goober the Traveling Bear. And don't forget, you can get the Goober the Traveling Bear calendar in a couple more weeks online and Adventure Game Source. But we are at Jumonville Glen. And the reason I'm on the camera talking is this is from the French perspective. So you're going to see a video of how the French were relaxing, minding their own business when George Washington and his war party assassinated Ensign Jumonville. So let's move on and we're going to go look at the Glen. Josh, you want to pause the camera? Yep. My wife actually liked this. I was surprised. All right. Well, this is one of the many signs that's here at uh, Jumonville Glen. And the woods and all still look like it did 260, yeah, yeah, 75 years ago. And I have uh, Jim and Josh with me bodyguard. as my bodyguards because I am French. And you never know what British uh, or provincial soldiers could be out here. We're going to pause the camera till we get to the Glen. Well, we're, we're traveling down the path. Josh and Jim are talking about Little Round Top, but we are actually at Jumonville Glen on the path. And uh, they're being time travelers from the, the time tunnel. For those of you over 50 that remember that TV show. So, well, we've come across the monument here, Washington's first battlefield, prelude of the French Indian War. And of course, we all know that General George Washington was a colonel then, and he had a, a small band of troops or provincials and some uh, Native Americans led by the half king. And they snuck up on the French that were doing nothing wrong but coming to visit George Washington and ask him what he was doing in the area and uh, him and his allies open fired and killed and routed most of all of them captured several and of course Ensign Juman V was executed now my fr trusty helpers Jim and Josh are a little confused by the pro-French video that you're watching but they're, they're saying it's pure propaganda Luckily, we're going to be at the seminar listening to several. More so, diplomats or spies? We all know that they were diplomats, not spies. Mm -hmm. Here we have a picture of Washington and his men sneaking up on the French. And the French were doing nothing wrong. They were just relaxing. And out of nowhere, Washington said, fire. We are now overlooking the, the Glen. And we'll walk down the path to check it out. All right. Well, we had a bit of a walk coming down from up there, down here. We are now in the Glen. And this is where the surprise attack happened. It's a very somber place here, by the way. And here's a little map. The skirmish at Jumonville Glen. And don't forget, at uh, Fast Play War Games, I have made a game of this along with the other French Indian War battles. So looking up, you could see how uh, formidable it would be for Washington's men to be firing down into the fishbowl where the French were relaxing, not doing anything wrong, and were attacked in an unprovoked way. Now, the French, of course, try to escape, and Ensign Juman B is killed. We are going to uh, end our video here, but first I'm going to ask my fellow friends of Josh and Jim, do you guys have any comments you'd like to make regarding our Jumonville Glen video? I don't Beautiful think. place. Yeah, it's, it's lovely here. It's, uh, if you have an opportunity, it's interesting to definitely come up here and check it out, because like, from a, especially seeing it from a tactical perspective. I've read about it before, but you know. But yeah, that's quite quite a sheer cliff, yeah. practically. Like if you're, this is a like this is a bad place to camp if you 
suspect you might be coming under attack. Well, be up there. but yeah. you know, when when you're French and you're on a peaceful peace mission to talk to General Wa or Colonel Washington, and you're not at war, it's very depressing. Yeah. Well. <laughs> so. Yeah. But we will see what happens at our lectures, and I'm sure we're going to learn more about the Juman V incident. Thank you. Stay safe. Be kind. Be courteous. And visit a French Indian War site near you. Thank you. Hello, Bill Molino here with Bill's History and War Game World, and we are at Fort Necessities Museum. And it's quite impressive. So I'm just going to uh, walk the museum. I don't want to interrupt people, or so I'm not going to narrate much. Have some wampum. This wampum is a war belt, reproduction war belt. Just an incredible museum. Got our muskets. French Charleville. So this is a cyclorama that's similar to uh, Gettysburg. So as I cruise along the nice little museum, we, uh, oh my gosh, we have encountered Goober the Traveling History Bear now. He is at Fort Necessities Museum too. Pretty cool. He seems to be showing up everywhere where Josh shows up. All right, well, we're gonna go and look at the fort outside. Okay, I got Josh to talk about Fort Necessity. Take it away, Josh. Goober and I are here at the uh, reproduction of Fort Necessity, and this is, uh, you know, a pretty much a scale reproduction of Fort Necessity, and, you know, they have this slide here that they used to, to help fight off the, oh, I think that I might be mistaken. All right, Josh, tell, tell my <laughs> viewers what's really going on. This, this is a playground. It's this is a playground. <laughs> All right. Well, real fort's burnt down. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's head over to the real fort and not the playground fort with Goober the Traveling Bear. And we're having a lot of fun today, everyone. It's like 75 degrees in Pennsylvania in November. We got Josh and Goober the Bear. And. We're going to, with Jim Shaw's here, I'm doing my best not to get him in the video. Because he says my name. <laughs> he says your name. Oh. That's right. You can Google it. <laughs> well, here we are at the building of Fort Necessity. And I'm not going to do a lot of narration, but we are out on the outskirts of the fort. And um, we're having just a wonderful afternoon before our lectures begin. And I believe the half king said this is pretty much nothing but a batch of sticks in a shed. <laughs> so Fort Necessity, I think uh, many people's homes have a better stockade fence around their houses than this thing was built. But they was thrown up in a, in a hurry to give some protection to the troops. We'll pause the camera here. So here's our British defenses signage. 
and the French attack, the superior French forces. In all my videos, the French are always superior, and that's just um, French Malise, French Bereeds, and there's a map of how it looks, and we'll pause our camera and zip over to the fort. All right, well, we're getting close to Fort Necessity itself. The real one this time. The real one this time, not the playground one. We have a swivel gun. Now the trenches were built, and you can watch a miniature war game of my Fort Necessity battle. Oh, and there we have a swivel gun. All right, well, we have Goober the Traveling Bear on a swivel gun. Now, I've done several videos on artillery pieces. A swivel gun is a small caliber cannon that's normally uh, on an up and down type of hinge and a swivel. So the process is you can actually move the barrel quite easily and look for a target. To fire. It's a shorter range than of course a regular artillery piece of the period. I think that I should definitely sculpt it, 3D digitally sculpt a Fort Necessity I think you model. So, I thought you were going to when Bill was saying he was going to do Fort I, I have a real nice Fort Necessity at home in 54 millimeter scale. Um, I could use a different building. Now supposedly the Washington men had a few rums rum and cokes in here without the coke um, but as you can see really not a lot of protection at Fort Necessity it's great having my friends Jim Shaw and Josh with me at this event also well Our Fort Necessity here is uh, just incredible. And everyone here at the site, very nice about allowing me to uh, use the video camera. Now out there is the French line of woods where the French would fire upon our, our British troops and provincials. And these are the trenches that Washington had dug. Of course, the rain caused issues with the flintlocks. And I'm going to encourage everyone to Google Fort Necessity and look up the information on it. All right. That's about it for now. I'm going to say stay safe, be kind, and be courteous. Thank you for watching. Hello, Bill Molino here with Bill's History and War Game World, and we are once again at Fort Necessity. This time we're here on March 4th, 2023. I'm with Walt, Kevin, and Mike, and Goober the Traveling Bear is with us too. It's uh, not quite a spring day, but uh, we've done one video on Fort Necessity. We're on our way home from the Braddock's Battlefield History Center, and we thought we'd stop here along the way. All right, we'll pause the camera here. All right, well, we have a little bit of wind. I don't know how this video will come out, if the audio will be bad. This is just gonna be a, a quick two minute snippet of Fort Necessity. So the trenches, and this is the scale. They had a couple swivel guns. Here we go into the fort. And once again, like my previous video, made back in November.
what would have been like firing from the from the walls well that's what it'd be like oh it's a and of course here's the little cabin So, that's about it for now. I'm going to say stay safe, be kind, be courteous, and uh, follow the adventures of Goober the Traveling Bear. We're here at Fort Necessity. Thank you. Hello, Bill Molino here, Bill's History and War Game World, and we're at Braddock's Grave Site, um, Fort Necessity area, in our little trip that we're making. and. Uh, done another video on this but uh, anyhow we're here March 4th and we have Goober the traveling bear with us and Walt and Kevin so we're gonna go take a look at that monument we've done a video here once before but um, that was in the winter this is the spring hold on everyone so on this uh, March 4th day here's the Braddock Road Trace Braddock's grave is down there when it was discovered and then they moved his body up here and for people that uh, probably won't ever get out here let's see my buddy Jack in Arizona Jim O'Neill in Scotland, and of course, John, the police officer in Broome County, New York. I hope you enjoy seeing some of these sites that you may not be able to get to because of your location. It's a beautiful spring, uh, not quite spring, but the day turned out to be pretty nice weather-wise. And here we have the monument. Major General Edward Braddock. Here lies the remains. So if uh, we follow that path down there, which I've done a video previously. So I'm not gonna go down the path. It's getting late. We have a four hour drive home. We'll pause it here. Okay, so down at the end of this path, which is the Braddock Road, is where General Braddock was buried and then they had the carts and wagons go over his grave. So the natives couldn't uh, desecrate his grave. All right, well, that's about it for uh, the Braddock's grave site. We've been here before. Look at my playlist to my other videos. Thank you. Stay safe, be kind, and be courteous, and visit a historic site.